Okay, so let's talk about Tolman. If you missed the Tolman presentation, or if you were in the fourth cohort um, of my uh, my Monday Wednesday section, and I messed up, um, I'm going to go over Tolman right now with you, so you understand what's going on and what you need to do. Okay, so. Um, we're starting with an introduction to argument. I'm sure that a lot of you have had some experience with argument in the past. So in order to get you up to speed, just to make you remember what you already knew about um, how Aristotle does argument, uh, Aristotelian argument, I have this video here. I'm not going to show it now because I don't want to waste your time. But I do want you to go back and read it because it's really important. Um, once you have watched it, Come back to this recording. Okay, so you just watched the video, hopefully, and uh, one of the things that they did not talk about it is audience. Of course, Joshua Bell was in a subway, and a lot of his audience was not there. You know, people would self-select usually to go to his concerts. About two percent, probably, people of people uh, are classical music aficionados. So when he's in the subway, I would say probably very few of those people are interested in classical music. They're listening to hip hop, country western, rock, whatever, um, but they are not uh, a lot of them listening to classical music. So he also is not appealing to his audience. So of course I have to remind you about audience. I always remind you about audience. Um, audience is very important. For example, if you are writing an essay uh, because you're ticked off at being late to school every day because a traffic light isn't timed, who would be your correct audience? You're right. It would be the road department. <laughs> I know that you said that, right? Okay. Um, and if you're ticked off because your roommate never does the dishes, uh, you could be writing a letter to who? Welcome your roommate. So, hold on, my Alexa just went off. I have no idea why. Um, okay, so um, you're going to be writing that to your roommate, and, of course, that's going to be a very uncomfortable conversation. It always is. Okay, uh, let's remind you also to define your terms. If you control your terms, you control your argument. So make sure that you define any terms. For example, if you said that, you, that feminism is dead, you have to argue about... Uh, feminism, so that means you have to define feminism. So, like for example, here's a definition. My definition of feminism is being proud of what makes women unique. So if you define the term, you control the term. And you don't have to use dictionary definition. You can use your own definition if you want. All right, last thing before we get into Tolman is that you have to make sure that you focus your argument. You have to make sure that you're making that connection that pathos, that connection with the audience. So you want to tell a story, you want to make a connection, you add some facts from sources. It's not good to use any global topics in a global way in a, in a persuasive or argumentative paper because you're just not going to make any good arguments. So the thing about it is that you have to focus down to the, the most important part. For example, let's say you're making an argument about how medical marijuana should be legalized. If you want to make that argument, it's a lot better to make the argument about one kid with cancer who was saved by medical marijuana. Then you're making that personal connection and people are able to understand your argument much better. So remember all of those things as we move into Tolman. Okay, now we're moving into Tolman. So um, I'm going to go uh, back out here to table of contents and you can follow me if you want. I'm going to go into Tolman, which is right here. Week six. Okay, so um, there's six steps in a Tolman argument. And let me start by telling you about who Stephen Tolman is. Stephen Tolman was a philosopher. He died in the 80s. He was really involved in trying to figure out why modern arguments don't, they can't really use the Aristotelian method because it just frankly doesn't work. So he went in and um, analyzed hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of 
successful law arguments, lawyers who are making successful arguments. And what he found is that successful arguments had something called warrant. So that's what's different about a Tolman argument is that there is a warrant. So a Tolman argument has six steps and there's a lot of structure built into the steps. Now, Tolman is very complex. I'm giving you like an introduction to, this is like the kindergarten version, kindergarten version of Tolman, but it'll work really well for your argumentative paper, okay? And also for creating those slides. So if you haven't created your slides yet, I'm talking to cohort four in uh, Monday, Wednesday. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna help you make the slides. Okay, here we go. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make a really strong claim. Now, I have to stop and talk about our class before we go into claim. I want to make sure that you feel safe. So one of the things that we have a problem with in today's society is social media. People will spend a lot of time um, trying to embarrass you on social media if they disagree with you. I don't know why they do this. They're part troll, but <laughs> they will. And I know that you fear this. So one of the things that I want you to be uh, aware of, an option for my class, is to play a devil's advocate. Now the devil's advocate position started in uh, the Catholic Church. And when they were uh, trying to decide on a, a pope, a bishop, um, there was a position specifically to, called devil's advocate. That person was supposed to dig up all the trash about the person who wanted to be pope or the person who wanted to be the bishop. They might like that person. In fact, a lot of times they chose their best friend to be the devil's advocate because they would know all the trash, right? So uh, that person likes the, the po person who's, you know, might be a pope or a bishop. But their job is to find something negative about them. So the devil's advocate position is not necessarily a position you agree with. In fact, it usually is not a position you agree with, but it is a position you want to take. Now, a lot of times in college, we cannot expand our knowledge base or understand other people unless we start to play with devil's advocate positions. If we're stuck in the same position that we've always been stuck in, then we're not going to grow. So it's really important to occasionally take a devil's advocate position, and I'm encouraging you to take a devil's advocate position for this paper. The thing about it is, though, you're not allowed to tell anyone that that's not your position, that you're taking a devil's advocate position. You're not allowed to tell anyone, and no one is allowed to ask. So if someone says, is this really what you think, you're not allowed to answer. And in that way, everyone in the class will be protected because nobody, even me, won't know whether that's really your position or not. So you don't have to worry about being graded on what you think or what you might think or what you don't think but you've presented. Um, you're, you're graded on how well you do it. And also, that takes out that social media thing. People can't uh, try to shame you if they don't know if it's really your position. And by the way, if anyone... In, and if you hear, even hear, a hint of someone uh, calling someone out for a position that they took in my class, I want to know about it because I'm going to have a very uncomfortable position with, uh, very uncomfortable conversation with that person. Okay, so when you make a claim, now we can go to claim, <clears throat> I want you to be really bold and focused and I want you to make a claim that you would feel really uncomfortable posting on social media, okay? That's kind of how you can feel about it. If it's really uncomfortable, if you know that you would have trolls after you for the next three weeks, that's a good claim. If you make a claim like, oh, cats are better than dogs or something like that, it, it's banal. It's stupid. Don't make a claim like that. I want a strong claim, okay? Something that's a little bit controversial. So when I was talking to you about how to, <coughs> how to make, I'm losing my voice, I don't know why. Um, it's all right. You can't get the COVID uh, for a video. No, I don't have COVID. Okay. <laughs> all right. So let's say when I was talking to you about how to write an essay, I talked to you about making a statement. That's one way that you can write a good essay is to make a controversial statement. So um, an argument paper is a perfect time for that introduction. So let's say that I were going to, I were going to use the, um, the statement that I gave as an example when we were studying how to write a paper and we were looking at introductions. 
So I'm going to say, uh, I do not believe in equality. Okay, so there's my state. Now, if I put that up on social media, yeah, people would totally troll me. Um, now, after I make that claim, I give some grounds for the claim. That's the second step. So the grounds would be, if everyone was equal, we would be denying their talents, their culture, everything that makes them unique. Okay, so that's my grounds for saying that I don't believe in equality. Now I have to give the warrant. Now the warrant connects the grounds and the claim, and the warrant is the most difficult part. So what I have to do to get to the warrant is I have to say, okay, how does uh, we would deny people their individuality relate to I don't believe in equality, okay? So how does that relate? Well, you could say it relates because instead I believe in equity, which is equality of opportunity, okay? So that's my warrant. Get that? Okay, that's the hardest part, really. We'll go over it again. Don't worry. Okay. So then I get backing, which is data. That's, that's stuff I can get off the internet, books, whatever, all right? And then I think what would someone with an equal amount of education and intellect to me say about my argument, say against it? That would be the rebuttal, all right? So let's say someone says, come on, Dr. K. When we say equality, we mean equity. We don't mean that everyone has to be exactly equal. What are you, crazy? No, we're talking about equity. We're talking about everybody should have an equality of opportunity. So that's the rebuttal. And then my qualifier, which is what I would be willing to compromise or soften to come to an agreement with someone who would argue against me. So the qualifier directly relates to the rebuttal, all right? The qualifier always directly relates to the rebuttal. Don't forget that. So what I would say is something like this. Well. If what you're meaning is equity, then you should use the word equity. You should not use the word equality. That's imprecise. So when you say that you want something for society, you should be saying that you want equity, not equality. Because this is not a time when we should be using the wrong terms. So that would be my qualifier. Okay, there, so there's a little video down here. It's not really very interesting. But if you really want to watch it, you can watch it. I'm not going to watch it. I watched it once and it was boring. Okay, I don't know why I put it in my class. It's there. All right, some people like it. Okay, the slide challenge is not here. And the reason why it's not here is because it's on the front of the page. It's, uh, I'm going to delete it right now. Um, it's in your, your um, announcement. So let's get to the, the slide challenge so I can tell you what you're doing. All right. So whether you miss class or whether you are in cohort four and I forgot to, to do something for you, you just click here to get to the slide challenge. And look, you've worked on it already. <laughs> okay, so they created a slide already. So, um, and they've been working on it, but you just click there and you work on your slide. If you haven't uh, had an opportunity to work with your group on slides, the slides can have lots of pictures. They could be very interesting. So go look at the slides of your your a cohort, whatever your cohort is, and if you haven't had an opportunity to um, be part of that argument, you might want to go over it, make sure that it looks good. This one doesn't look like it's completely done, so you might go in there and fix it. Um, and to, to be quite honest, I didn't tell them exactly what to do, so that's why it's not done. They just have their claim. All right, so let me show you how we can do an argument. So I'm going to start with um, this argument um, let me just open, open a Word document. Okay, so let's say claim grounds warrant backing rebuttal and qualifier. Okay, so these are my, 
These are what I'm going to work on. Okay, so um, I'm going to make them a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. I don't know if you have this on your phone or whether you're watching it on the computer, but I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger so it's easier to read. <clears throat> okay, let's say I start with a claim. Let's say my claim is that, um, let's say college textbooks... are too expensive. Um, not really very controversial, but we'll get back to that. So then I want to make some grounds. Okay, why would I say that? Um, most students can't afford their books. Okay, so then I'm going to go to warrant. Now, most students can't afford their books college textbooks are too expensive. Now, if you're paying attention to what I've said so far, you're going to see that we need to define this term. This is too broad. They are too expensive. What does too expensive mean? Okay? So, and most students can't afford their books. So, let's make this claim a little bit stronger before we go on, all right? How about this? College textbooks should not cost more than 10% of an average student income. Okay, now I'm being really specific. So I could look up for my backing, and I'm not going to do it right now. I'm just going to skip over backing, basically, because I don't want to waste your time looking up <laughs> different. But one of the things for my backing is I could look up how much does a student, an average student, make. Uh, per year. And then what's 10% of that? So that's how much uh, textbooks for the whole year should not cost more than. So college textbooks for one year of college should not cost more than 10% of the average. Okay, so that means it's 5% per semester. So I would work that out with the backing. Okay, so then the warrant is what? College textbooks, most students can't afford their books. College textbooks for one year of college should not cost more than 10%. So how does most students can't afford their books and college textbooks for one year should not cost more than 2%, 10%, sorry, 2% would be even better. Um, most students, uh, how does that support college textbooks for one year should not cost more? So most students cannot afford their books. Hmm. Okay, so the warrant, the thing that I'm leaving out, should be something like this. Um, uh, college textbooks often cost um, more than $100 per class. Okay, um, that means students end up paying uh, $400 to $600 per semester. All right, so the warrant is going to talk about how the, the fact that college textbooks often cost this much because we don't have that in here and I, I think that's kind of important okay uh, actually they probably cost about 150 so maybe I'll change this a little bit um, okay here we go so the backing I would look up some information I would get three sources back up what I'm saying. And you know, you're planning this out, so if the sources say something different, you can change these numbers a little bit. It's no problem. And, um, and then your rebuttal, I'm going to write out three because I always get on you guys for writing out three. Okay. Rebuttal. Uh, this would be somebody uh, who's equal education and experience to me. They would say, for example, um, textbooks um, must be constantly updated to stay current. This costs a lot of money. Okay, 
So there's the rebuttal. And then the qualifier, and by the way, these should be just sentences. They shouldn't be big paragraphs, okay? Just a sentence is fine. And then the qualifier, I have to answer this rebuttal. Textbooks must be constantly updated to stay current. This costs a lot of money. So what I might say in the qualifier is um, textbooks shouldn't um, be updated more than every three years, okay? So yeah, it's current information. We can get that off the internet. Meanwhile, let's just keep the textbook prices down by not updating them except for every three years. So there's my qualifier. Um, you see how that works? Okay, all right. Yeah, you don't? Well, you can watch the video again, all right? Okay, you can also call me, you can text me, you can ask me these questions. All right, now go do that slide, um, uh, the Tolman slide activity, and then work on your paper. You should be having a peer response group uploaded a rough draft uploaded to peer response. Yeah, I, I think I need some more sleep. Maybe some more coffee. <laughs> and, um, and I will see you in class. I hope this was helpful. I'll talk to you later.